Being a larger figured lady can have its drawbacks, especially in Paris, the capital of high fashion, where being a woman of weight can be considered a no-no. Until now, that is, because a group of fleshy Parisian babes have formed an association for weighty activists called Allegro Fortissimo. There are different types of beauty and fashion, but they're for all women. Each woman is beautiful, and in any case, each woman has their own beauty. Anne is the public face and pinup of the group. A best selling author, she shot to fame when the Virgin Megastore in Paris featured her in a big advertising campaign. She has also made this commercial for videotapes, which has the refrain, You're beautiful. But not everyone in France agrees that Big is beautiful. Last year, Anne was thrown off an aeroplane because she refused to pay for two seats instead of one. She complained, and Allegro Fortissimo successfully challenged the airline in court and won their first victory. The group meets every week in a cafe in Paris to chew the fat and discuss new ideas. One of their projects is a catalogue for big women. And once a year, they produce a fashion show which features their own designs. On Saturdays, they meet in the local pool to get in touch with their bodies, and it seems to be working. We can't mix up a man with a woman. She's not androgynous at all. She's got boobs, she's got a bum. And that's why she's a woman, a real woman. In fact, generally men, and I can say this from the calls I get at the association, men prefer big women. Welcome to Algeciras, known as the asshole of the Spanish peninsula, but also home to El Bombero Torero, Spain's celebrated dwarf bullfighting troop. Eurotrash locked horns with them as they roared into town. When you're a bullfighter, uh, you feel big and important. Uh, you're in the ring and you're fighting this huge animal that's bigger than you are. It's uh, dead dangerous and uh, when you can beat the bull and you're as small as us, uh, that's a fantastic feeling. They may talk big, but they're certainly not talking bull. These mini matadors always get a huge reception from the crowds whenever they appear at Algeciras' main bull ring. So being vertically challenged hasn't stunted their ability with the big beasts. These little men are aficionados and, and real bullfighters. They live for bullfighting. You can see it every time they make a move. They do it with great enthusiasm and rhythm. Although the bulls who take part in El Bombero Torero's fights are never killed, there's always the chance of shortened life expectancy for these plucky pequeñitos. It's better not to think about it. When the big bastards come in, start snorting at you, you'd better have your running shoes on, matey. Bulls aren't the only thing breathing down their necks. Like all macho matadors, they have plenty of senoritas in hot pursuit. Oh, yeah, you know, it's true what they're saying, that, you know, it's great. I mean, we have a lot of luck with the girls, That's you know. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we like all the girls, especially single girls. Well, they're very cheeky and I find them very sexy. So, if a dwarf bullfighting troop comes to your town, remember, lock up your daughters, as size clearly isn't everything. Another matador who's as much lady killer as bullstabber is Jesulín de Ubrique. At Spain's first ever women-only bullfight, he was hard-pressed keeping the audience out of his buttock-revealing trousers. He's just so macho. Well, I'm old enough to be his mother, but I think he's really good-looking, you know, he's incredibly beautiful man. These girls will do anything for a glimpse or a grope with their idol. Hezelin thinks he knows how to handle it, but so do his fans, some of whom are harder to deal with than his bulls. This one's for all the ladies, all right? And thanks to the ladies, Hesselin is now one of the highest paid bullfighters in the world, receiving up to £100,000 a fight. He plans to retire in five years' time, at the tender age of 25. His hero is Julio Iglesias, which may explain his taste for dodgy trousers and why his fans like to offer him their knickers. How charming. But the ultimate tribute came when a fan parachuted in to snog her idol, a stunt that convinced Hezulin that he's onto a good thing. Oh, the old thing's been absolutely uh, uh, no, good now. I think next year I'll definitely put on another show just for the ladies. Wicked. Where would the French be without Euro Disney? Unfortunately, they'd probably be here at Marapolis. 
If you like half-hearted dancing and vast expanses of concrete, then you'll love Marapolis. They might not have Mickey and Donald, but they do have Eric the Rat and Boris the, um, the sort of furry cat type thing. For grown-ups, there's a scenic boat ride with a series of historical depictions of bored French families. Sure, there are warnings not to swim and not to drink the water, but the good news is that lawn bowling is coming soon. Well, now it's time to say a fond farewell to Eric the Rat. But we've just got time to pop into Park St Paul to catch Marcel the Clown's famous dog-kicking act. The kids just love the park's collection of exotic animals, even if the animals don't always like the kids. But never mind, you can always scare yourself, a little bit, in this haunted house. That is assuming you have a deep-seated phobia of plastic dolls and dangling bits of string. But there's one attraction where they're years ahead of Disney, the house wine. After a bottle of Cuvée de Parc St Paul, everyone gets to feel a little goofy. Hello Antoine, hello Jean-Paul. For Euro Trash, I will risk my life and my dignity by dressing as a Smurf and penetrating the wall of Euro Disney. So, wish me a good luck and uh, vive la France! Our plump friend in his pointy hat is not really a Smurf, but our undercover reporter. We at Eurotrash were upset that our blue Belgian chums had been left at the labour exchange while American imports like Pluto got all the glory. So we smuggled our Smurf into Euro Disney to see how long he'd last. Sure enough, after only 15 minutes of solid Smurfing, suspicions were aroused and the Disney muscle men started to move in. The interrogation that followed was brutal. In the end, our intrepid reporter had survived for just 20 minutes. It might have been longer if he hadn't told the security guard to smurf off. Enfin bon, il y a, de toute façon, on a déjà tout plein d'attractions dans le parc, donc on va mettre des plus. Quoi.